Hello, I'm Mark Pikert, host of Working Blue, the weekly interview series where I get to talk to some of today's hottest gay porn stars. And I say gay, but I would, I'll talk to straight porn stars. I would love to have uh, Johnny Sins on here. We can do mirror exercises, as we are twins. Uh, and lady porn stars, sure. I'll, I'll talk to any porn stars who will have me, uh, including the two who are coming up, because when I started doing the show, I knew that I had to have them on together because they are the most wholesome, lovey-dovey couple in all of gay porn. Uh, it is quite sickening to look at, except they are also extremely fucking nice, which is also sickening to look at, but somehow these two make it work. So let's talk to Dylan Diaz and Jake Waters. I build them in alphabetical order. It has nothing to do with star power. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Nice to see you again. In a while. See, that's the shit that I'm talking about. Both of you in perfect unison. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> so, welcome, guys. Uh, I would love to hear the story about how the two of you met. I think that it's probably really fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's a So, you and I did our interview back in, what was it, like February or like January of 01? And you're like, are you dating oh. anyone? I'm like, oh no, I'm single, I love it, blah, blah, blah. Not 01, I mean 21. Tw and I was, that's that's like, I was stuck, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, Pre-9-11, completely different world. 2021. <laughs> 2021. Um, and then like a month later, the interview came out, I sent it to him, and then he called me immediately after listening to the interview. He's like, so, you're single now? I was like, yeah, he goes, well, you should come out to Vegas. And a couple days later, I was out in Vegas, and we've been pretty much- Inseparable since. ever since, basically. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's, yes. one, I think it's incredible. Uh, I'm also very like you, where I meet someone, I'm like, yep, you're it, can move in with me. I don't have time. I don't have time. Uh, but you guys had met before. You filmed together, didn't you? Yes. So we met on set. We met at work. We were uh, filming a scene for Noir Mail. And uh, we were both booked for the same movie, but working with other people. But, you know, between work, we were just chatting behind the scenes. And, you know, as it were, uh, my scene partner uh, got the boot. And he was brought in to work with me on day two. And, um, you know, from that point, we had a great time. We had great chemistry. It was a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, we kind of decided to keep in touch from that point on. But we lived on opposite sides of the country. And, you know, we were both porn stars or whatever. So, you know, it just kind of moved really slowly until that interview. After that interview, I was like, you know what? Opportunities like this don't, you know, show up every day. You got to shoot your shot and see what happens. And I did. Made it. <laughs> I would love to know what happened to that performer uh, and where Jake buried the body. <laughs> <laughs> you will never tell. <laughs> I mean, Vegas, baby. There's a lot of desert out there. Lots. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, there are. I'm always leery about doing anything couple related because. As I can uh, attest from personal experience, relationships end a lot. Uh, sometimes badly, sometimes fine. But the two of you, I had no qualms about because even if, God forbid, things didn't work out, I think that both of you are adults enough that you can do so amicably. But I don't see that happening. Uh, what? There is a desert, remember. <laughs> it's. <laughs> <laughs> but how is it how is it uh finding each other at this stage in your lives and having already kind of established yourself as adult performers has that made it easier i think it's made it a lot easier we've both dated in the past and we've both been hurt in the past so coming into this we didn't take this you know lightheartedly. like look here's my past here's what the shit that i've done here's um what I'm looking for, and if you can't step up to the plate, let me know now, and you know we can just part ways as friends. I mean, we're both we're both adults here. We're not kids anymore. We're both in the same industry. 
I don't have time for games. So mm -hmm. either you're going to be the man that I want, or you know, we can yeah. stay friends. And we we both knew, you know, we had an idea of the things that we didn't like because we've experienced a lot of that. And you know, we were really excited about the things that we were experiencing and feeling together. And so we were like, all right. Again, we're not kids, so we've been around the block a few times. We know when it's good, we know when it's bad. So let's go for it. Also, there's also a thing of like not wanting to waste time. And I think we still we still we still deal with that. Like, I don't want to waste time. Like he's here now. I want to have a great time with him. I, I, you and I, Dylan, were texting, and you're like, "Oh, Jake's away," and I said, "Uh." Isn't it great when they go away for a little bit? And you were like, no, I really miss him. And I was like, I, I don't even know how to talk to you. You're not even a person. Yeah, I have a hard time being apart from him at all. You know, like obviously we have to, you know, work, whatever life happens. But, you know, I'm always excited when we get to return. I'm gonna be gone for 10 minutes. I will walk a dog, he's back. You're like, he's like, you're back. I'm like, I was gone 10 minutes, calm down. <laughs> You know, most guys will take that opportunity to run. So <laughs> the fact that he came back says a lot. All my shit's here. <laughs> it's hey, we've all walked away and left a lot of shit behind. <laughs> it happens. Shit, I sold my house and moved here, so I can't have nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did do that. <laughs> Stop it! It's too much. <laughs> uh, so I mean, Jake, when we spoke last year, uh, you hadn't done a ton of studio at the time, and you had done, you had certainly done some, including meeting Mr. Diaz. And you had been dating a guy who could not handle it when you did. Uh, what is it like going to set knowing that you're with someone who is cheering you on in your career now? Completely comfortable. Because he gets excited knowing that I'm going to work and who I'm going to work with. He's like, okay, when you get back, tell me what happened. I want to know all the stories. You know, he's like, okay, just be careful, be safe, you know, do all the things that, you know, that a supporting spouse is supposed to do versus someone like who's questioning me, like interrogating versus like question because they're curious. It's completely different. Yeah. I mean, even I will come back from running errands and my boyfriend will be like, how were they? And I'm like, shut the fuck up. Who cares how my errands were? This is ridiculous. But I think that we all have different ways of being in relationships, is what I'm gathering from this interview. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's some, the trust level here is, it's like unquestionable. Like I can go to work, he can go to work, or we can go do whatever. And there's no question about what did you do? Where did you go? Why did it take you so long to get back? It's like, okay, well, you're out doing whatever it is that you needed to do. So all right, see when you get back. Yeah. What has it been like having this relationship while you're shooting your your fan platform content? Has it just next leveled your game? Actually, it's been really helpful because I always have a shooting partner. You know, I always have someone <laughs> to work with. If someone, you know, flakes or bails out or, you know, whatever, their tests don't come back good, he's always there. Or we can, I love, my favorite is doing the group scenes when it's, when it's the two of us with someone else. That's my favorite. Um, so it's actually given that we're, we motivate each other, we help each other, because neither one of us are very tech savvy. So we kind of help each other out, kind of like blindly, the two, the two of the blind leading the blind. But eventually we figure it out or we find someone to help us. <laughs> um, but it's been, it's been good. It's been very motivating, motivating to have him here supporting and, 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 you know, sometimes grabbing the camera and doing what needs to be done. You know, and it's always nice to have an in-house fluffer. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else. Uh, one of the things I really love about the adult industry is as awful as, awful as some people can be uh, in terms of being demanding, like fans being demanding or being too familiar, uh, there is no one rooting for you like a porn fan. And watching the people respond to the two of you showing sharing your relationship on social media has been very moving in a very strange way because people are really excited for the two of you. Yes. We went to a party in LA for one of the studios that he's worked for and people were coming up. I didn't know any of these people. They're like, oh my God, 
you are so cute. I can't, I, we follow you guys. We love your story. We can't wait for the wedding. We're like, aren't you guys engaged? We're like, not yet. Oh, no. <laughs> but, but we can't wait for it. It's like, I'm like, thank you. It, it's really inspiring to feel like people, gay, straight, trans, what have you, rooting for us. Like even our family uh, are rooting for us. Like, um, I have family in California, and sometimes you know, he may go to California by himself, or I'll go and I'll stay at my family's house, and they won't even say hi to me. They're like, Where's Dylan? I'm like, <laughs> Hi. They're like, oh, we don't care about you. <laughs> now, Jake, if memory serves, your mother fired you from a job for being late? Yes. <laughs> so she's a taskmaster. She's a taskmaster. She, Does she... she wrote me up, and she was my ride. Yes. Yes. I knew that there was a lot more to that story, but honestly, you should have kept her on time. <laughs> right? Uh, does she approve of Dylan? Like, how did that meeting go? She, Were you late? No, she loves him. <laughs> like, on uh, Facebook, she's calling him her son-in-law, and, oh, my son's got me this, and she's been here a couple of times out at our place in Vegas, and she's absolutely head over heels for him. We text all the time. I speak to her like a couple times a week. He talks to her more than I do. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's a sign of a keeper when you have someone who can take the burden of constant communication <laughs> off your plate. Great. Yeah, my family, my like everyone in my family adores him. And my family loves him. I have a smaller family, but they love him. Well, it's more select. You have a more select family. <laughs> yeah, we're a little, you know, exclusive. <laughs> yes. Well, New York, New York City, you know, it's very exclusive here. Uh, Jake, now that you're in Vegas officially, what has that been like in terms of your career? Because for a while, you, you only could pursue opportunities if people would pay for your travel during COVID. Yeah. Um, I love it. I love it out here. I'm glad I made the move. I have absolutely no regrets moving out here. Uh, now that I'm here and people know that I'm in Vegas or in a couple hours away from California, I've been getting a little bit more bookings. Um, so far this year, it's been a little slow, but you know we're still coming. It's the first quarter, so I'm expecting things to pick up a little bit, but I'm getting calls left and right. I'm getting people calling to want to do fan content. They're like, Oh, I can't wait till you're in LA and I can't wait to shoot with you. Great, perfect. Yeah. Show me a, a, a your your negative test and I'll be right over there. Yeah. I'll be right there. Shirt off. Ass <laughs> up. <laughs> when you cause you guys have done a few scenes together since you became an official couple, since you became Instagram official. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is the vibe like on set? Not in terms of like exposing your, your sex life to strangers, but just do, is there a sense that like people are expecting something like special relationship sex from you when you're on, your, when you're on set? I think to some degree, I kind of feel like we are an amusement park ride that people are excited to ride. <laughs> <laughs> They're waiting in line to get, a, get a, you know, get their ride. And that's, there's pressure and it makes me a little bit nervous, but then usually afterwards, I'm like, oh no, we did good. We had a great time. Looks like everyone had a great time. So, okay, we're good. We're good. Really? I never feel that. I always feel like they're looking for that, the chemistry that they already know that we have, but now that it's on camera and um, it's just us, they normally just let us do our thing. Like you two do what you do naturally and we'll just capture it. And I, for when I'm not with him, sometimes it's a little uncomfortable because I'm still trying to get used to people being around and the cameras and all that, but it's getting easier. But when I'm with him, I just get lost in that moment. And, you know, every once in a while I'll slip out and say, I love you. And he's like, you can't say that we're on camera. And then he's like, oh wait, it's us. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> you can't say I love you. You're a thief. I just caught you in my kitchen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's porn, you know, we're gay, so you know, five minutes dating, oh, we're married, married. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, since I spoke to both of you, everything has really opened up, and in-person events have started making a comeback. 
So what has that been like getting to reconnect with fans and with other people in the industry at these events? Thank God. Okay, so the first one we did was really nerve wracking for me. I was tense. Like I was not sure whether we should be there. I kind of felt like this event should have been canceled. I didn't understand. I wasn't comfortable. I was kind of like in this uh, unofficial VIP area the whole time because I was just afraid of everyone and their germs. Darling, everywhere you go is an unofficial VIP area. <laughs> But yeah, that one, I was really just not sure. I was not having a great time with it. But then we did something recently where we went all the way out to New Jersey and we danced in, oh, you, you, I did, we danced at Paradise in Asbury Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we were there for the weekends and had a great time. That was fun. And it was as if COVID had never existed. <laughs> like the mask mandates were gone. Everybody was just having a good time. It was relatively crowded you know, both nights that we were there. Um, and we had a lot of fun. It was nice to feel that it was almost retro, um, retro <laughs> to be in a space with crowds of people, you know? Like even going to the movie theater for the first time, I was like, wow, this is so old school. Look at, look, look at these, there's people. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's kind of nostalgic to be able to reconnect. Doing everyday life stuff now feels like you've traveled to your hometown and you're like going to your hometown movie theater for the first time since high school. And you're like, ah, remember the popcorn? Ah, I had a good time here. I was there like in February, 2020. Yeah, but it feels like forever. It feels like a lifetime has gone by in between. So it's nice to be able to, I mean, I'm still, we're both still pretty cautious and, and leery about things, but- I wear my mask everywhere. Everywhere. I'm slowly starting to take mine off depending on where we are. I, what's crazy is everyone is so, <clears throat> everyone in New York is like, masks are bullshit. But also I see everyone on the street wearing masks. Like not even in stores, just like walking down the sidewalk in masks. And I, won't, I don't do that. I do do the stores still to a certain degree. Like there are some that I don't. If it's more open air, then I don't. But just, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a huge shift in our thinking in terms of getting comfortable with what, what that means going mm -hmm. forward. I think that the masks are actually here to stay. You know, I don't think we'll have them on 24 hours a day, but there will definitely be times, you know, I don't know if we'll ever start, you know, walk the street and not see them. I can't imagine yeah. when that will be, I'm sure, no time soon. I think it'll probably be another three years before this is kind of, we'll look back and like, oh, remember when this happened and all the things we could have done. But every time you turn around, there's a new variant and, you know, there's still people to this day who don't believe that COVID-19 is a thing. It's who like, aren't vaccinated to begin with. And so we're like, yeah. Although the two of you have come out of the, the pandemic pretty okay. Yeah, not, not, neither one of us caught it. Not gonna oh, well, that's too, well, I got it for a day. And then I was, and then my body was like, all right, you were sick for a day. You have to get back to work now. I'm like, really? <laughs> I, like, I was hoping for a week, honestly. <laughs> I thought <laughs> after the vaccine, they say sometimes you'll you know start to feel some of the symptoms. So I thought, if anything, I'll start I'll feel it then. Nothing. I mean, I was a little bit tired, but I'm always tired. So it wasn't really like anything out of the ordinary. Oh, you had better believe the day after I got the, the second shot, I called into work and I said, oh, it's really kicking my ass today. I'm just going to crawl into bed. I went to the mobile. I got a pack of camels. I drove to the movie theater. I smoked camels. I saw a movie, came outside, smoked more camels, went to Taco Bell. <laughs> I lived my life that day. <laughs> so what, I mean, you, you guys are together in Vegas, you're shooting fan platform, you're doing studio work. What is next for our favorite dynamic duo? Um. So we're still, we're, this year we're branching out and starting to do a lot more fan content. Um, just because we've had, we sat down, we had that conversation like, okay, here are the parameters of doing this and let's move forward. Plus we're, we're missing out on a lot of, let's not, let's not beat around the bush. We're missing out on a lot of money by not doing it. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who want to film with us individually and together. So why not? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's basically branching out. I, I loved working with the studios. I'm going to continue to work with the studios, but you know, I, I kind of like um, not being at the mercy of the studios and just sitting around 
waiting for their phone calls, you know, now I feel like I'm being more proactive about creating content, selling content and making a passive income, even while I'm pursuing my studio gigs. Um, so it's, you know, a win-win. Well, and Jake, are you still doing your, your cam shows that you host like a talk show? No, I stopped doing those probably a couple of months before I moved. I was just with the traveling back and forth from Vegas to Kansas City, it just got too much. And then I was in the process of finding movers and packing. It was just it was just too much. You should start it up again. I thought about it, but I just it, it's I'm, I don't mind doing the camp, but a lot of it is just sitting and waiting where that waiting time I could be doing something completely different, posting it and making money versus waiting for people to, to tip me to do something. You could read a book while you wait for people to come and tip you. And somebody probably would too. Like here's $2, take your pants off. <laughs> yeah, oh, $2, <laughs> high roller. <laughs> <laughs> no, 200 I, tokens. Right. I think uh, next No, I really, I, I will say a lot of the comments on our interview last year were fans of your chat of your cam shows that are talk shows. They were, and I don't, I didn't mind doing them. It was just now, maybe I should, maybe I should get it started back up because I had, I had great conversations with people from all over the world about anything and everything. Yeah. Sometimes I just let them chat. I'm just reading and chiming in when I could. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And they're just making those pecs bounce every once in a while. <laughs> just keep eyes. I mean, you guys chat, but eyes here. <laughs> Always. Uh, well, I, I'm so delighted that the two of you are together. I'm so delighted that things are going so well in terms of your careers. Uh, I think that two of, the two of you are very indicative of kind of where gay porn is at right now in terms of personality, where you're seeing a lot more people bring a lot of different colors into the conversation. And the two of you are not what anyone, not a stereotypical porn star. And I think that that stereotype needs to be dismantled as quickly as possible because uh, everyone working today uh, with a following is weird and funny and really enjoys the work. And I think that the two of you are so indicative of that. And it's a great paradigm shift. Thank oh, you. Oh, I love doing this. It's it's a way to, you know, express myself the way that I choose to do it, whether if it's with him, if it's another performer, whether it be trans, uh, male to female, gay, straight. It's 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 two consenting adults having fun for whoever's pleasure. So if, if you like yeah. it, you like it. And if you don't, just keep scrolling. There's, there's something out there for everyone. So mm -hmm. I don't have to be put into this little box that I am the, the bottom of the, the gay bottoms and that's the only thing I'm allowed to do. So I, I love it and I love having different conversations with all these different people that I've interacted with and learning um, all different types of stuff, what they like, what they don't like, what they experience in the adult industry, what they and what they like about it, what they don't like about it. So when I'm walking into these different situations, you know, I know what to expect. Yeah. And and I think a lot of people miss that from who are not in this industry. They're like, well, if you're the black gay bottom, you are only allowed to do X, Y, and Z, which isn't true. I can do whatever the hell I want to because it's my body. And I made a, I made a, um, a comment on Twitter that I'll stick my dick into whoever I choose to and I'll allow whoever to stick their dick into me that I choose to. And if you don't like it, so what? That's, that's your business, not mine. You're not gonna tell me what I can and cannot do with my own body. There's a real subset of porn viewers who really hate it when you guys film with trans performers and it's so inexplicable to me. Don't watch it. I don't get it. I don't see. I've actually made a career out of like breaking boundaries. Like I do. Yeah. Everything and everyone, and I enjoy it. <laughs> and if you don't like it, you can watch me do something else, or you can watch somebody else. That's okay. It's yeah. fine. Um, 
but I like that. I like breaking the boundaries. I like, you know, not being so predictable. Like, you don't, you know, you, you don't know what you're going to get from me. I might, I might be bottoming. You don't know. I might be topping. Who knows? She might have a dick. Who, who knows? <laughs> who knows? That's why you have to subscribe to OnlyFans. <laughs> New content delivered every day. <laughs> Uh, guys, I'm so happy that we were able to do this today. Uh, I'm big fans of both of you. I'm so excited that uh, viewers are going to get to watch you guys be sickeningly adorable together with your shirts on. Uh, Jake, Dylan, thank you so much for joining me. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Tune in next week for another episode of Work in Blue.